Well, good morning. Good morning. This morning we're going to keep talking about living for the glory of God. And if you're going to live for the glory of God, you have to wake your computer up. Let's go back. All right. If you're going to live for the glory of God, you have to go to your lesson. <laughs> All right. I was hoping that would get a few more laughs. <laughs> On time. <laughs> All right. So I know there was a, a few lesson missings, and uh, I was thinking about that yesterday. I thought, well, just remind you about that this morning. Yesterday, we talked about keeping our eyes on Jesus and the need for the ongoing work of the gospel in our life, for our lives to be transformed by the power of God if we're going to live for the glory of God. And as we begin our time this morning, I want you to uh, use your imagination with me for a moment. Can you do that? How many of you, you, you think your brain's almost awake enough to use your imagination? All right. How many of you have a very good imagination? All right. How many of you have an overactive imagination? All right. I understand. I do too. So does my little girl. But I want you to imagine an orchestra, if you will, assembled with the very, very best players in the world. Uh, imagine that the very, very best of the best have been assembled to play in a great concert. And not only are they the very best musicians, but they are equipped with the very best instruments, the rarest and most valuable, the most beautiful. The best players, instruments, great masterpieces of music, incredible compositions, led by an amazing conductor. What would you expect that concert to be like? Gee. There you go. <laughs> you got the answer correct, all right. You would expect that concert to be amazing, wouldn't you? But what would happen if you had all these incredible musicians, beautiful compositions, rare instruments, but no one tuned before the concert? <laughs> you got me figured out. I know that's not true. But it really would be a waste, wouldn't it? It, it really would be a waste to have all these amazing musicians, beautiful instruments, incredible compositions, led by a skilled conductor, but if no one tuned their instrument, it would dishonor the work of the composer, it wouldn't showcase the value of the instrument, and it wouldn't highlight the talent of the musician, would it? If we're going to live for the glory of God, we need to live lives that are tuned to our Father's heart. And I want to talk to you today about tuning your heart to your Father's heart. We're called to live our life for the glory of the one who created us. And in that scenario that I shared, there would be no glory in it, would there? The work, the great composition would be dishonored. It would be a waste. We've been called to live for the glory of God and to live lives that are in tune with our Heavenly Father's heart. Nothing is more essential than tuning your heart to your Heavenly Father's heart if you want to live for the glory of God. We need to see Jesus for who He is. We need to experience His forgiveness, the gospel in our life. We need that ongoing work of the gospel, the transformation that God brings through His Spirit. But we need to tune our hearts to the glory of God. If your life isn't in tune with your Father's heart, it will never be able to bring the glory to God that it's designed to. It doesn't matter if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. It doesn't matter if He's given you great talents and abilities. If your heart isn't in tune with His heart, you're not going to be able to live for the glory of God. No matter how talented a musician, no matter how excellent their instrument, it must be tuned how often? Every time. And it must be tuned to a standard. You just can't tune your instrument to whatever you want to tune it to, can you? You all tune to a standard. And the standard that we need to tune our hearts to is our Heavenly Father's heart. And so I want to talk a little bit about how we do that this morning. If you have your Bible, 
We're going to narrow in on just one verse this morning, and it's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, we're in the middle of what we commonly call the Lord's Prayer. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, and probably many of you have recited it before. One of the things that is unfortunate about that is sometimes because it's something that we recite, it's not something that we think about. And in fact, Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer. You might even want to call it the Disciples' Prayer because they asked Jesus one day, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus gave them a pattern or an example to follow in their prayer life. It wasn't that he intended them just to repeat it, but to use it as a pattern, as a blueprint for their prayer life. And in the middle of this prayer, I think we find the wisdom and the knowledge about how to tune our heart to our Father's heart. Now, Jesus begins this prayer by teaching us that we come to God with Him. He said to pray, Our Father. And when Jesus was speaking to His disciples, He says, Pray, Our Father. He was saying, You come to the Father with Me. Jesus is your access to the Father. The only way that you can enter the throne room of God in prayer and in worship is to come with Jesus. Have you ever gotten into a place because of who you were with? Anybody? All right, you, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're only at a place because you are with somebody who got you in. And only Jesus can get you to the Father. And Jesus gives us access to God. You can go to the throne room of this universe at any time if you know Jesus is your Savior. And we come to Jesus as our Father. Isn't that a, and we come to God as our Father. Isn't that amazing? God says we can come to Him and call Him Father. Father implies relationship. It implies, clo it implies closeness and nearness. And Jesus said to pray, Our Father in Heaven. So you can have a close relationship to God, but He's in Heaven. He's on the throne. He's in control. He said, Our Father in Heaven, may Your name be holy, or hallowed be Your name. We come to God with Jesus. We come to God in relationship, knowing He's going to accept us and not reject us because of Jesus. We come to worship and reverence God. But then we come to tune our heart. Look at Matthew 6.10. Jesus said to pray this, Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And these two things that Jesus asked us to pray, Jesus told us to pray, will help you to tune your heart to your Heavenly Father's heart. Praying these two requests can revolutionize your life. Praying these two requests can revolutionize your life. Your kingdom come and your will be done. What is it you think that we need to tune our hearts daily? Somebody... Yes. Absolutely. Just as easy it is for an instrument to go out of tune, it's easy for our lives to get out of tune, isn't it? Uh, I read a story a little while ago about a dad and a son who uh, went to McDonald's. And, and they were at McDonald's and they had their, their uh, burgers and their fries and uh, the dad had finished his meal and his son was kind of taking his time, probably a slow eater like my little girl. And dad said, you know, I'm still a little hungry. So he reached over to his son's french fry pile and he grabbed a french fry. And as he was pulling his hand back, his son smacked his hand. <laughs> and the dad was kind of startled for a moment and he could have been angry and he could have disciplined him, but he really just sat back and thought for a moment. And he thought, he doesn't realize that I bought those french fries. They're, they're mine. <laughs> I was generous enough to give him some, but I bought them. They're mine. He doesn't realize I could take all of them away. He, he also doesn't realize that if I wanted to, I could bury him in french fries. <laughs> it's true. As he thought about that, he realized that in the same way, it really mirrors sometimes how we treat God, isn't it? 
You see, we have a tendency to want to push God out of our life. And when God messes with our french fry pile, sometimes we have a tendency to push him away. My little girl, she likes to play very specifically and line things up and organize things. And my 17-month-old son likes to destroy things. <laughs> and that can be a bad combination sometimes. And she likes to push him away from her stuff. And I think sometimes we often try to push God away from areas of our life that we're trying to control and to manage. And God wants to be God of all of your life. And He wants to, you to tune your heart to His heart. Because you see, we have a tendency to tune our life to our own wishes and desires. To our own wants, to our own dreams, to our own plans, to our own will. And God wants you to learn to tune your heart to His heart, to His plans, and to His will. When we live a life out of tune, there's dissonance in our relationship with God. And God wants us to live a life that's in harmony with His heart. So He says to pray, Your kingdom come. What are we praying? What are we asking when we pray for your kingdom to come? Well, yes, in a general sense, we're, we're looking forward to and praying for God's kingdom to come to this earth physically and visibly. And it is and it will. But God's kingdom, although it's not yet, it's also now. It's also here. God is building his kingdom now. God is a king and he has a kingdom. God's kingdom is his rule and his reign. And right now God rules and reigns in the hearts of those who know him and love him and trust him. God is building his kingdom one person at a time. As people come to know Jesus Christ as his saviors, they acknowledge the son as saviors. They acknowledge the thing, his kingdom. And so when we pray, may your kingdom come, we're not just praying for an event in the future. We're praying a prayer for our own lives and our own heart. We're saying, God, may your kingdom come in my life. May your kingdom come in my life. We're recognizing God as king. Now, most of us don't have problem believing that God is king, do we? I mean, we've got number 37, right? The Hallelujah Chorus, you with me? You awake? All right. We, we get that God is king. We don't have a problem with that until it comes down to God being king of my heart and my life. And that's where the pushback starts. Like, I believe God's king, but I don't always want him to be king of me. Because sometimes I want to be in charge and sometimes I want to do my own thing in my own way. When we ask God for his kingdom to come, we're recognizing God as king and saying, we're saying to God, God, you have the right, you have the authority to rule and reign over me. And I want to live under your rule and under your authority. God, I want your kingdom principles to be lived out in my life. I want to follow you, to live for the glory of God. We have to recognize God as king over our life. If you're going to live for the glory of God, you have to realize that God is king and you're not. The throne of your heart belongs to God and not to yourself. But it's so easy to want to crawl up on that throne, isn't it? It's so easy to want to be in control. It's so easy not to align our lives with God's purposes. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Paul says, You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Your life in Christ no longer belongs to you. It's not about you anymore. It's about God. It's about His kingdom. Your life belongs to Him. You've been bought with the blood of Jesus. And God is your King. And to live for His glory, you need to recognize Him as King. God's kingdom is coming to earth one day. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 says, The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. You know, when God really needs to get something done, he calls on a trumpet player. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can hate me later. Trumpet players, you need to have my back. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there was a loud voice in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and forever. What's the world coming to? The world's coming to Jesus. He's the king, and he's coming back. And that's our great hope and our great confidence. And in the meantime, God calls us to allow His kingdom to be established in our heart and in our life and to live with His kingdom as our primary concern. God wants you to live with His kingdom as your primary concern. That's why you pray, God, may your kingdom come in my life today. God, may your kingdom principles guide my life. May your kingdom authority rule my life. And God, may I live for your kingdom. May I live for what matters. Jesus said to seek first what? 
His kingdom. But our tendency is to seek first my kingdom, your kingdom. Jesus said to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. When you pray for God's kingdom to come, you're halfway through the tuning process. The second half is what? We're to pray for His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is not automatically done on earth. I think that's pretty obvious, isn't it? All you have to do is pick up a newspaper or go online and read the news for the day and you'll know that God's will isn't automatically done. You'll hear about murders and rapes and crime and you know that was not God's will or God's plan. God has given dominion to mankind. He's given us free will. He's sovereign, yes. Will the world come to the conclusion that God intends? Absolutely. Is He in control? 100%. But He has given in His sovereignty dominion of this world to mankind. And as such, you have free will and free choice. And God's will is not always done on earth. But it can be. It can be. And Jesus says we are to pray, God, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, God's will is done perfectly. It's done completely. It's done immediately. And God says we can pray that for our lives here on earth. Prayer is a means of seeing the will of God come to pass in our lives and our hearts. When we ask God for His will to be done, we're tuning our life to God's plans. We're tuning our heart to our Heavenly Father's heart. And we're saying, God, I want to live a life that's in harmony with your plans and with your desires and not my own. And it's a struggle. You have to do this daily. I so wish that this was something that at the end of this message I could say, hey, we're all going to make a commitment to live in tune with God forever. But it doesn't work that way. You have to make that choice every single day. The Christian life is lived out one day at a time. Yesterday we talked about running the race, right? And, and in Hebrews 12 it says that we're to run with endurance because it's a daily race, not one day at a time. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. If there's one thing that I can be confident about, well actually there's a few. God loves you. He gave His Son to die for you. And He has a plan for your life. Every single one of you, God has a plan for you. He created you. He made you in His image. And He calls you His masterpiece. Did you know that? Now you may have looked in the mirror this morning and not not felt that. But God says you're his masterpiece. Look at Ephesians 2.10. Paul says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. That means he saved you, he made you new in Christ, so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God has a plan for your life. And tuning your heart to your Heavenly Father's heart, praying for His kingdom to come and His will to be done in your life, praying that daily will allow you to find and fulfill God's plan for your life. Finding God's plan for your life begins with surrendering your plan. Finding God's plan for your life begins with surrendering your plan. You know, a lot of times we wrestle with and struggle with, what is it that God wants me to do? What's God's will for me? And, and, and we're like, How? I don't want to miss God's will. I don't want to miss God's plan for me. But I want you to know this. If your heart is surrendered to God's heart daily, if daily you're saying, God, may your kingdom come and may your will be done, you'll never miss God's plan. You can't. You won't. God won't let you miss His plan. He's not trying to hide it from you. A few uh, months ago, under the uh, prompting, I'll say, of my wife, you can uh, hear strict command, I had to go through some boxes of papers. I am sort of a paper collector, like things from the past, you know, anybody like that? Hold on to stuff forever, thank you. All right, my wife is not. She's not sentimental. It's clutter. It needs to go in her mind. She eBayed her wedding dress, all right? All right. <laughs> She said, it's going to do me no good now. I'm never going to wear it again. May as well get some cash so I can go shopping. 
<laughs> and uh, just the other day, Lena asked her about her wedding dress. My daughter's obsessed with weddings. So she dresses up in her little wedding dress. She talks about her wedding, her prince, all that. And uh, so she asked mommy about her wedding dress. And anyway. <laughs> so I was going through some papers and seeing now if, although I've already gone through these papers, what I could possibly part with. And one of the things that I found was an application to culinary school because that was my dream. That was my desire. The first thing I wanted to be was a meteorologist because I love the weather. But then I realized you had to be really smart. And I was like, well, that's not going to work out. <laughs> so I was like, I'll cook. That will work. And I enjoyed cooking. I still do. And I thought, I'll be a chef. And I picked out my school, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, School of the Culinary Arts. Had the application all ready to go. And then I came here. <laughs> and God messed up my plans. And I was thankful to find that. Because it was a reminder of God's leading and God's faithfulness. It was a reminder that although I had made plans for my life, God was faithful to guide and direct my steps to His will and to His plan. When you pray this request, when you say, God, may your kingdom come, may your will be done, you're asking God to tune your heart to His heart. You're asking God to help what He cares about be what you care about. You're saying, God, may your kingdom come. May, may I care about what you care about. May your kingdom principles, may your kingdom values be what I am concerned about. May your will be done. May you guide and direct me in my life. Here's what you're not doing. You're not asking God to change His will. When you're asking, when you're praying this prayer, you're not asking God to change your will. You're not saying, God, I've got some really great plans I would like you to bless. Have you ever done that? God, I've got a really great idea and I'd love to have your blessing. That's not what we're praying. We're not praying for God to change His will. We're not asking God to bless our own will. What we are doing is surrendering our will to God. And we're saying, God, I recognize it's not about me. I recognize I'm not the king. I'm not in charge. I believe that you are. And I want to live for your glory. In heaven, God's will is done perfectly, completely, and immediately. And we're to pray for that to be done on earth. And we're to start with ourselves. You know, it's so easy to complain about how God's will isn't done in culture. It's so easy to complain about how God's will isn't done in our government and its decisions. And we should care about those things, yes, we should pray for those things, but the number one thing that we should be concerned about is God's will being done in my life and in my heart because ultimately, at the end of the day, when I stand before God, when you stand before God, that's what matters and that's what you'll be held accountable for. And so we can pray every day, Father, may your will be done in my life, in my work, in my school, in my conversations, in my Facebook posts, in my music, in my plans for the future. God, may your will be done. In order to live for the glory of God, you need to live a life that's in tune with God. And to live a life in tune with God, you need to tune your heart daily to your Father's heart. He has a great plan for your life. You can trust Him because He gave His Son for you. You know, sometimes we think it's scary to trust God with our life. There's a lot of things he does that don't make sense to me. There's things he's allowed in my life that confuse me. But I know this. He gave his son for me. And if he gave his son for me and allowed him to go to the cross, I can trust him. I can trust him with my life. Praying this way will align your life with the principles of God and with the purpose of God, with the plan of God. And there's nothing better in life than having your life aligned with God's life. For you that drive, if you've ever driven a car that's out of alignment, it's not fun, isn't it? You take your hand off the wheel and it goes off course rather quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> And that's what happens in our own lives. When, when our lives are not aligned with God's purposes, we get off course. We get away from God's plan. You can miss God's plan for your life. You don't have to miss God's plan for your life. He doesn't make it hard. 
but he calls you to tune your heart and to align your heart with his heart daily. If you tune your heart to the Father's heart, you'll never miss the will of God for your life. I'll promise you that. If you'll say every day, God, may your kingdom come and your will be done, God will direct your steps. And He will cause you to fulfill the plan that He has for you. And He has a great plan for each of you. And you can trust Him. Our Father in Heaven wants His will to be done and He's searching for hearts that are tuned to His heart. Hearts through whom He can accomplish His good and His perfect will. Hearts through whom He can bring His kingdom agenda and purpose to this world. And God's looking at you this morning. And he's asking you, would you tune your heart to my heart so that my kingdom could come and my will could be done in your life so that you can accomplish the great plan I have for you. He looks at you and says, you're my masterpiece. You're some of my very best work. I made you and shaped you just the way I wanted you. I've given you my son to redeem you from the slavery of sin. I've bought you. I've purchased you. I've invited you into my kingdom. Would you live for it? Would you live for my glory? Would you tune your heart to my heart? Will you live for the glory of God? Would you bow your heads this morning? I want you to just take a couple of moments this morning and just really wrestle with this question up until this point in your life has life been more about you living for you or you living for God about you living for your desires and your dreams or about God's dreams and God's desires I want to promise you God's plans are infinitely greater than your plans and his plan is good his plan is perfect and God has a great plan for your life. I don't want any of you to miss it. I want all of you to be able to fulfill the destiny that God's called you to. I want all of you one day at the end of your life or when Jesus returns to be able to look back and say, no, I wasn't perfect, but I followed Jesus. I lived for His kingdom. I lived for what matters. And I'm ready to experience eternity with my Savior. Don't miss God's will. And if you tune your heart to your Father's heart, you never will. Will you be that person? Will you dare to pray every day, God, would your kingdom come? God, would your will come in my life? Father, I thank you this morning for your grace and for your mercy. Father, I thank you for the opportunity that you give us to live in and for your kingdom, to bring you glory. Father, we're so unworthy. Father, we don't deserve to live in your kingdom. We don't deserve to live for your glory, but you call us to it by your grace and through your mercy. And Father, I just pray that you'd help everyone here this morning, students, counselors, faculty, staff, myself. Father, help all of us to see the need to tune our hearts daily to your heart. And Father, may we surrender our plans and our dreams and our desires and exchange them for yours. May we pray for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. And Father, that's what I ask this morning, that your kingdom would come in my heart and in my life and in each heart here. And may your will be done to and for your glory. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our hymn.